Hello, Sue. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you very much. It was a long week, but everything is fine and everything is cool. Your new album, Pitch Black Sands, it will be released in April with uh, Napalm Records, right? Oh, yeah. It's just around the corner. Is your first album with Napalm Records? How important yes, is it's Yes, our, it's our fifth album, but it's the very first album on Napalm Records. How important is for a band like you to have the support of such an important company like Napalm? Um, well, for us, it's a big thing, and for us, it is important. Um, but I think that this is this is a different case for every band, because our case or our history is that um, we are here now for fourteen years, <laughs> which is a which is a life, and um. From the beginning on, we had the luck to work with different uh, smaller labels, and uh, it was great. Actually, it was it was a very good um, it was a good way to learn a lot of stuff for yourself because um, music industry is just like that, or at least in the underground rock and roll scene that you have to do a lot of by yourself. So. Um, all those years when we were signed with these uh, smaller independent labels, we had to do everything uh, by our own, meaning the management, the booking, the promotion, the the, the social media, the everything. And um, because of that, we really learned uh, to manage ourselves. And I think this is something that is absolutely necessary these days. And... Um, but but after all these years, we also reached a point um, when we felt like that, that there are two options. <laughs> One is that we're going to die <laughs> because it was just so much work. Personally, it, for me, it was at the end, it was way too much. Like, uh, let's say 90% um, of time that was about the band was for me about uh, the coordination, the management and all those background stuff and only 10% or even less was about the music and um, that wasn't healthy anymore. So I personally really looked for someone who can um, be a partner, you know, in spreading our music and um, in making any further steps. And Napalm Records was for me something that I really wished uh, to end up one day. So I'm really happy that we um, we end up at Napalm Records. And uh, so for us, it was the perfect step. And uh, it's, uh, yeah, they are, we are in the middle of very uh, exciting times also because of that. Well, we are now in exciting times with, we just... Uh were an epidemic and your last album was released in 2020 gotten run just in the pandemic what's yeah. the differences musically and lyrically with this new work um it was you know uh as you said the album before our fourth album got on the run it was released right before the pandemic or or we couldn't even go really um, to play shows. And normally it's like that. The first, whenever you release an album after that, you have like one, two, three years to tour around with that album before you start to write a new record. And um, But this time we did not have the chance. So, um, of course, what could we do? We took the time and started to write music. Um, and yeah, to be honest, uh, it was tricky. Because normally you have you have some more years between the writing process, and that means that you have some more or different type of influences in your life, and um, especially in the case of the Health Freaks, um, where we really don't like to repeat ourselves. So all of our albums are very different from each other, you know, and um, so it was tricky to. And it wasn't sure that we really are able to find out a new way for or something new, you know, uh, to make a new album of it. And but we started to work on it, and um, it naturally came. So I am very um, like positively surprised how good it turned out. And um, because it wasn't sure if we were if we are able to do something to find the new spice that we can put in a new album. Um, but I think that we, I think that we found that. Um, 
so yeah, there have been chances that <laughs> that it all goes really bad. But no, luckily it it turns out good. Well, as you say, uh, you're a band like uh, that likes to to change things uh, between your albums, and I already heard your new 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 work and. Well, you like to experiment. It's very punk, yeah. but uh, at the same time, you included a lot of electronic sounds and modern metal, metalcore. What will you like to try later? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea where this will lead us or where this will go. Um, I, you know, um, I, I can only speak from my point of view, and I am just writing the lyrics and I'm just responsible for the vocal melody. So um, our bass player, Gobi, is mainly responsible for the instrumental part. So I don't know where he will where he will go on, you know? But what I know from myself, at least, that oh, right now I am really much enjoying uh, to experiment and to learn it more better and better uh, to use the metal screaming vocal techniques simple because it's a huge fun but it took me quite long till i could just manage a little bit of it and that's why we also started to use it for uh for pitch black sunset and i definitely wanted to use these in the upcoming um music as well but i really don't know what we are going to do next um as I said, it's never like it's never like that we sit together and then we figure out the concept. It's really um, we start to work on it and then we see how in which direction you know it goes. So uh, I don't know how it will turn out in the future. Hopefully, something good. <laughs> Maybe a, a, a punk mariachi. <laughs> Well, did, did the pandemic serve you as inspiration for the lyrics of the album? Is a reflection of the times you lived um, three years? No, too bad. Like, uh, you know, many, I know that many, many people had different experience in the pandemic and they had, I don't know, for example, way more time in their life and then they could uh, try out new things, try out new, I don't know, maybe i don't know they started to paint or started to do to, to new new things but for me it was very different actually i back then and also now i still had a job i could work from home i am to be honest very happy if i could if i can work from home because i am like uh i don't know i i don't i think i think i i am i'm kind i'm kind of an introverted person who who likes to be at home with her cats and um and with my husband so it's like uh, so for me it wasn't being home wasn't a bad thing i definitely did not write about the pandemic uh, but all, of course it also had an influence so we started to write the lyrics on, on the album while uh, the pandemic was still very active um we were writing the album when just in our neighbor country in ukraine the war started um we were writing the album while um, we faced the worst inflation in our country uh, we ever saw in our lifetime. So it is not an easy time to be <laughs> to be alive, you know. Um, there are many uh, crazy things going on, uh, which are not really good things. Um, so yeah, of course, you know, the mood and the vibe definitely has an influence of uh, the lyrics, but I never felt like that I have to write about the war or I have to write about the pandemic or I have to write about Hungarian politics, you know, even though it's a very active part or a very, I would say it's a, it is a very big part of our life, you know, um, but it's just about, it's just about uh, the mood and the vibe and the atmosphere uh, that is building it around us. Well, let's talk about the health risks. You you came from from Hungary, and how difficult it has been for a punk band from Hungary to grow and earn a place in the scene. That well, we don't see a lot of bands from from your country in the in the main scene. But you're growing up and appearing in everything. 
was very difficult, was not so difficult. How was your work on that? Well, you know, um, I think I think it's important to say that I really don't define us as a punk band. I really see us as a punk metal band, you know? So I always, I think there is, I know, I know we are mixing a lot of different stuff like punk and metal and hardcore and maybe even pop music and even some electronics. So there is a lot of influence in our music, but I never thought about the half bricks like it is any type of genre band. Uh, even though I think that um, you know, I know that Euro doesn't seem to be very big from outside, and actually, it's not very big. Um, but the differences in Europe are really huge. Like the life quality in the western part or the middle part of Europe is very different from the eastern part. And we are based in Hungary, which is in the eastern part, and um, there is a huge difference from making it from this part of the world and making it from a part where um, there is a better life quality even though I know that there are bands who came even from way 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 more difficult places and they made it and I feel a huge respect for them so for example um, also in our area um, there are bands who made it from Moldova who made it from Ukraine and I feel like I am very inspired by these bands uh, because I know that it was even more difficult for make it from there than it is from Hungary. Um, but it is, there are, you know, many, um, many problems that people just simply don't know. Like, I always like to use these very, very simple example. Um, but this example reflects, reflects uh, to so many problems. Um and the, the example is that if you want to start to make music, or example, uh, you're a guitarist, of course, you will need an instrument, so you will need to buy a guitar, right? And um, the, there, is no, there is no, I don't know, Hungarian guitar production, which is price-wise uh, so much better than, for example, a production in Germany. No, there are just a few like brands, and they are pretty much on they are like all on a very high price level right and for a german if they have as just said an average job okay he if the person has an average job maybe um they decide to want to buy a guitar and then maybe they have to work let's say three four months and they can put aside uh, so many um so many money that they are able to buy it now here in hungary or in the eastern part of europe if you want to buy the same guitar, you have to work 10 times harder because you will not need to work three months. You will need to work 30 months till you can put so many money aside that you can buy that guitar. And this is just one simple example. And there are so many things um, that costs a hell lot of money uh, if you're a band that it is absolutely not easy um, to manage it from this part of the world. But as I said, I know that there are like, I mean, there are bands from India. I can I, I have no idea how they could manage it. It's incredible. I feel such a big respect for them. And, um, and then there is just one more aspect and then I'm going to stop this <laughs> answering this question. Um, there is another aspect that uh, we are Hungarians, our um, national language is Hungarian and Hungarian is very 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 different from any other language especially also here in Europe so there is no other language that is familiar to Hungarian so for us it was also a step that we have to learn English before you can um, step out and go to or try your luck um in front of an international audience <laughs> so yes there are a few obstacles um to manage um so but you know we as a band as a health freaks um from from the first day on we we wrote the lyrics in english and we always tried to play as much as possible um, outside of our country and we always focused very much on uh, the international fans and I don't know if it's really because we focused on that or if it's just luck, but um, we always had a way bigger audience, a way bigger, way bigger fan base from outside from Hungary than in Hungary. <laughs> so, yeah, it's 
It's a bit crazy. But you should uh, maybe try something in Hungarian. It's oh, in no, 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 oh, no, yeah. to be honest, it's, 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 I, um, I, I, I admit that I wouldn't be able uh, to write good Hungarian lyrics. Hungarian language is very difficult. Like you have for, for, for one word or one meaning has many, many, you have many, many ways to express the same thing. And it is, very, I, I don't know how to explain it. I don't have the right words for it, but it's so difficult to write Hungarian lyrics uh without sounding ridiculous i know i know it's, it's strange to say that but it's so very it's very hard to write very good lyrics in hungarian and i know that i am not able to write good lyrics in hungarian and uh, i don't want to put any any shitty thing on the table even just because it could be hungarian so um uh it's it's not my cup of tea <laughs> okay you don't Want to to make the Rammstein thing to <laughs> to make well, the... and you know, and on the other side, I don't want to make Hungarian music just to to focus on any kind of uh, audience. Uh, our music is not a product; it's really something naturally. It's it's art. And about your lyrics, it's hard to 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 find the way to to write without insult anyone. You know about this cancel culture. And the metal and punk genders are often touch difficult to 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 talk topics. Do you think that uh, the, the art should be subjected to that cleansing of conscience uh, before to offend well everyone or? Uh... I uh, well, I never had. I never had any problems like that because I always write about my own and very honest thoughts. And the lyrics of the Half Bricks are actually never about offending anyone. Actually, I'm just maybe I'm just offending myself in the lyrics, but I would never offend anyone else. So for me, this whole uh, I don't know. We never had we never had an issue uh, because of that, but I don't even think that there is any problematic part in our lyrics that could be um, that could get, let's say, in trouble. <laughs> um, I don't know. I never had I never had this issue so far, and I was never when I was writing lyrics, I never worried about this. I know that time to time people maybe don't under. Or I would say. I wouldn't say that they don't understand it. I would say um, they they don't understand it the way that I meant it. But I don't have a problem with that because I think um, when the lyrics are out, everyone can and even should interpret the lyrics the way that they would like to interpret it, you know? Because maybe, maybe a line means something totally different for someone than it meant for me. But if it means something to them, and if it's it has some value, then it's great. About you, how did you start the music? Let's talk about your history as a musician. Uh, poo, it's um, uh, by accident. <laughs> That's how I got into music. Actually, <laughs> um, I was, uh, I was my whole life uh, very much into sport. Uh, I grew up as a gymnast. I made it on a quite professional level. Um, I had six times a week training. Sport was my everything. Actually, school was just the second thing. Sport was my everything. And then when I was 14, I had a I had a very difficult injury. So um, they, I had I had a um, I had very I had I had. I landed wrong on my feet, so I had an operation on my spine, and it was definitely clear that I cannot continue doing gymnastics, even though later on I did some other sport. But that was the moment when I was 14 when I realized that um doesn't matter that I worked for something as hard because I really did everything. 
um, I will not be able to reach it. Doesn't matter how how hard I fought for it. And yeah, that was the first time in my life I had some free time. And you would think that having some free time, especially when you're a teenager, is something great. Um, but it wasn't great for me because I, I was not used to having any free time. So yeah, and then um, uh, after a while, I I realized that I have to do something because otherwise I will go crazy. And the something was that I started to play drums because my uncle actually, he was a drummer and he still had his drum kit and he was still playing drums. So it was quite, let's say, obvious that this is something that I could try because then at least he can like a little bit teach me. So I started with drums and um, I even had a very shitty band <laughs> where I played drums, but it was really just about the fun. It was just a, it was just a hobby, you know, it was just about hanging out with the friends and making some noise. And um, but this band, this making some noise band was actually the root of the health breaks um, because already back then I started to write the lyrics for that band. Somehow I always like to do that. And at one point, our singer back then had not really any idea what to sing, even though the song was ready, but she was just standing there with my lyrics and said that she has no idea what she could sing. And then I just grabbed the lyrics and told her like, okay, let, let me try. I will just sing something. Maybe it works. And um, and yeah, and back then, um, the guitarist of that band said that actually my singing voice is not that bad. So maybe we should try to do something, uh, to do something with it. And yeah, that that was how the Hell Freaks was born 14 years ago. <laughs> wow! Just for finish, what's next for the Hell Freaks? Are you touring? You have plans for Latin America, maybe? Oh gosh, I would, you have no idea how much I would go to Latin America. It's so, it's on the top of my bucket list. So <laughs> unfortunately, I still don't have any like fixed date that I can share with you. I would love to, but I don't have. Um, but um, we are working very hard on um, some new dates. And there is also some dates that I cannot reveal at the moment. Um, so... Well, you know, in three weeks, the album is coming out with a new video. So we're definitely going to still to promote the hell out of it. But even though you thought that now we have released a million of videos, it should be it should be fine. No, we still have one more after that. <laughs> so uh, even after that, we will have a music video to release and to share with the world. And um, then we're going to have some summer festivals. And yeah, well, actually, our bass player already started to write new songs so it's crazy so i guess that even um this year we're going to record maybe two three new songs so uh yeah we're staying very active <laughs> maybe for an ep or thinking i don't know we, we don't have at this point i have no idea how where is going to lead <laughs> what is going to be you know it's just now it's just about the creative process we're going to write it and then we'll see what it's going to be <laughs> Well, so thank you so much for your time. It's, it's Su Susa. Susa. Mm -hmm. How should I pronounce it? It is Zuja. Zuja. Yeah, perfect. Wow, it was great. <laughs> Nuti? Yes, yes. Perfect. Wow. Hungarian Good is one. so hard. Good one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Zuja, thank you so much. So, uh, hope to see you here in Mexico, maybe now so long. And yeah, that would be great. <laughs> we are very, very excited to... Well, I already hear it, but the fans show hear the the new the half week album. Yeah, I can't wait to show it, guys. Well, to you, take <laughs> care. Take care, and thank you so much for having me. It was a great conversation. So, uh, yeah, hope to see you soon, live. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>